nucleosides. When you tie up the phosphates, you end up with nucleotides. nucleotides. When you polymerize the nucleotides, you end up with nucleic acid. Right? And if deoxy sugar is used, and if thymine is used instead of uracil, then it is DNA. DNA, right? And then we talked about that DNA molecule is basically always having a certain polarity. If one end is 5 end, then other end is 3, three end. 5 end has phosphate and 3 end has hydroxyl. Am I clear? And when one molecule has another molecule with it and making a double helix, then what, what really happens? That both molecules are parallel to each other or anti-parallel to each other? Anti-parallel to each other. The concept of anti-parallel is if one on one side of the double strand, if one strand has five end, then other strand should have three end. And on the other end of the double strand, if one end has three end, other should have five end. Am I clear? And all the nitrogenous bases should be complementary to each other. Right? And go on in with cytosine with how many bonds? Three, Three bonds. And add on in with thymine. thymine with how many hydrogen bonds? Two bonds. Two bond. And these nitrogenous bases have strong bonds or weak bonds? Weak, weak bonds. bonds. But backbones have Stronger strong bond. bonds. And nitrogenous bases bonds can be break, broken easily. Nitrogenous bases bonds can be broken easily. Right? For example, if I show you that these are the 5 end, 3 end, and of course now you will tell me here is 5 end, and there is 3 end, right? And these are the nitrogenous bases. Now the, with the concept which we are going to discuss is, if it is GC, naturally it has 3 bonds, if it is AT it has? Two bonds, GC again, three bonds, GC again, three bonds, and AT, two bonds, AT, two bonds. Now, actually, if you slightly heat up the temperature, for example, you put DNA in a beaker, right? And there's water, of course, and here is DNA molecule, double stranded. Right? If you slightly heat up or you change the pH, in both cases, both chains may fall apart. As I told you, that these bonds are not having strong relationship with each other, these strands. These hydrogen bonds are weak bonds. These hydrogen bonds can be easily broken by, yes, they can be broken by temperature change or by hydrogen ion concentration change, any pH change, right? Because when you alter the pH, right, suppose you make it acidic or basic, then what really happens, then charges alter here and hydrogen bonds break down. Or when you heat up the system, again they fall apart. When these two strands fall apart, Right? While their backbones are intact, while their backbones are intact, when these strands fall apart, the term is used denaturation of DNA. The term used is denaturation of DNA. Now, most of the time, this denaturation is reversible. For example, look here. I have DNA strand in my in a beaker container. I take the temperature up, the DNA strands will fall apart. Yani they will denature. Then if I cool down, again they will refuse. This is called not renaturation, re-annealing. The term is used re-annealing. They anneal with each other. It has nothing to do with Anil Kapoor, right from India. What again let me tell you that when you warm up this DNA solution, DNA molecules fall apart from each other. Which bonds break down? Phosphodiester bond or hydrogen bond? Hydrogen. hydrogen bonds. That's very good. But if you want to break down the phosphodiester bond, you have to add which type of enzymes? Nucleases. Nucleases, right? So this is a this should be a very clear concept. So when you warm that uh, heat up, they fall apart. 
we say there's denaturation right and if you cool down they again come together and this is called renaturation or better word is re-annealing the better word is re-annealing now when these dna strand look if this was a double stranded dna and it untwist here for example here it has hydrogen bonds in between these nitrogenous bases are broken down we say dna has melted at this point let me repeat it again when you warm up the dna double stranded dna at certain points both strands detach from each other right these are called melting points these are called melting points or these are called denaturation points is that right now some areas within the dna denature easily and other areas denature with little difficulty why let me tell you let's suppose here's a very long double stranded dna right and you give the same temperature to all of it right same temperature to all of it it denatures here or melt at this point it melts at this point very easily and it melt at this point what could be the reason that some points are melted easily and other points are going to be melted at a higher temperature answer is very simple it means the here the bonds are stronger or weaker weaker so this area is at rich or gc rich at rich so it means that whenever a dna strand or a portion of a DNA strand is very rich in AT, it will melt very easily because every adenine with thiamine has double. Right? And if some area of DNA is having more GC pairing, for example, look here, these are 10 GC pairs and only 2 AT, so it is difficult to melt. But if this area is 10 AT and only 2 G GC, it is easy to melt so it means that when we talk about that dna we are going to melt the dna right when we are going to denature the dna then how easily it will be denatured it primarily depends on that particular piece of dna is rich in gc or rich in at at points melt easily very good and gc point melt with slightly difficult situation clear now after this there is another term called melting temperature so i would like to clarify that what is meant by the melting temperature Let's suppose this is a container and we are having two different DNA strands in it. For example, this strand is from chromosome number 1 and this strand is from chromosome number 2. Do you think they will have same nucleotide sequence or different nucleotide sequence? Different nucleotide sequence, right? Now, these are two different DNA strands, they are put in a container and we heat it up. We heat until, we see when we are heating it, this start melting earlier, red strand start melting earlier and this start melting later. It means which is denaturing first, red one, which is denaturing later, blue strand and which one is rich in AT? And which one is rich in GC? That's so simple. Do you think you should have a trouble even to handle MCQs related with this? People keep on pondering. Is that right? That whenever a strand easily melts away, it is AT rich. Whenever at higher temperature it melts away, it is GC rich. Now, another term is used, melting temperature. Melting temperature means the temperature at which 
half of the strand is denature. For example, as you keep on taking the temperature up, for example, at 27 centigrade, half of it is 50% of this red is denatured. And at the temperature of let's suppose 32, this one is 50% denatured. So melting point for the first is 27 centigrade and melting point for the second is 32 centigrade. Am I clear? So what is melting point? Melting, melting point is the temperature at which half of given DNA strand denatures. What is melting point? Melting point is the temperature at which half of the DNA double strand denatures then it convert into single stranded configuration. This can be presented graphically as well. Look here. Let's suppose here is the temperature and here is absorbance of light. Actually absorbance of a particular wavelength of light in double stranded situation is different and single stranded is different. Let's suppose as you are taking the temperature up, right, absorbance is changing. Double strand absorb less light, single strands absorb more light. Let me tell you how. Let's suppose these are my two fingers and if light is coming from here, these are two fingers, if light is coming from here, they are absorbing less light. But if they become separate from each other, they will absorb more light. So as you keep on increasing the temperature, light absorbed by the DNA solution will be increased because it is converting from single strand into double strand. In one beaker, now these are two different beaker. In one beaker we put the red and in another beaker we put the blue. Now, temperature curve, as you are increasing the temperature, absorbance of the light keep on increasing. Here all the strand was double stranded. Here all the strand was double stranded. Here all of it is melted away, single stranded, right? So at this point, you can say, let's suppose it is 27 centigrade. This is the melting temperature for this particular DNA. Opposed to that, blue will melt away slightly at a higher temperature. It means that half of it will denature, let's suppose at 32 centigrade. So melting temperature for the first strand is different, second strand is different and this represents that which strand is more rich in AT and which strand is more rich in JC. Is it clear? Now another thing. We were talking about that once we have two strands of DNA, right? Two strands of DNA, they are not only complementary, but they are also anti-parallel. But once they are put anti-parallel, then they are twisted around each other, right? And when they are twisted around each other, right? They are twisted in such a fa fashion. They are twisted in such a fashion that nitrogenous bases are inward. Nitrogenous bases are N word, right? And let's suppose this is the water. Of course, DNA is present in aqueous environment. And the nucleus is water, isn't it? So DNA is present in water. Now, the water soluble part of the molecule should be faced outward. And water insoluble should be faced inward. Actually, nitrogenous bases are hydrophobic. Nitrogenous bases are hydrophobic. So they are stocked inward, right? And backbones are hydrophilic. So they are stocked outward. So normally when DNA double strand is present, right? The hydrophobic nitrogenous bases are pushed to the center and hydrophilic backbones are on the periphery. You may be asking, 
why the backbones are hydrophilic answer is very simple you know polar dissolve into polar water is polar or non polar water is polar and backbones have lot of phosphates when backbones have lot of phosphates phosphates are highly charged positively charged or negatively charged negatively, negatively charged so it means backbones are highly negatively charged they are negatively charged wherever there is phosphate it is negatively charged and of course when we say a molecule is either positively or negatively charged it is polar and when any molecule is polar it will love to dissolve into water is that right so what we learned that when this double helix is formed right the nitrogenous bases are put together on the interior of the molecule because they are hydro phobic and backbones because they are uh, charged molecules especially due to the presence of phosphates so they are oriented outward is there any question no after this we come to another concept that when dna two strands are twisted are they twisted rightward or they are twisted left handedly you can twist any one right handedly or left handedly or and you can twist someone loosely or right. tightly same is true about dna so when we have two strands and we are twisting them around each other around a single axis right in some portion of dna human dna or most of the human dna this is right handed twisted but at some points it is left handed twisted so we'll talk about this fact now right actually watson and crick do you know watson and crick yes sir in early 1950s who really gave the first model of dna right they discovered that dna molecule is double stranded molecule and it is twisted right handedly and this type of dna which is right handedly twisted this is called b form right b form <coughs> b form of dna b form of dna is right handed twist it is the most abundant configuration most of the dna is right handed twist most abundant configuration most of our dna is right handed twist and it is arranged in such a way that in 1360 degree there are about 10 nucleotides 10 nucleotides let me tell you what is meant by this let's suppose from this twist up to this twist it's a complete ring or now in this case how many pairs are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10. right so in one complete 360 turn there are 10 nucleotide from each side right and these nucleotide if this is the central axis suppose this is the central axis of the molecule and molecule is twisted around this central axis right now one twist is from here to here 1 2 3 4 5 6 9 10 10 and 10. now one 360 degree how many nucleotide pairs are there 10 and every pair is perpendicular to the central axis every pair is perpendicular to the central axis is that right so b form is right handed twist it's most abundant twist and in one 360 turn how many nucleotide 10 nucleotide and nucleotide are perpendicular to the central axis of the double helix any question here now then there is another form which is not b form rather that is called a form we'll go to z form as well a form in a form it is slightly dehydrated situation these are also right handed these are also right handed twist and it is usually it is only dna it's only dna it it may be dna on dna dna on any one molecule of dna another molecule of dna as well or one molecule of dna and other rna 
you know when DNA open, then one side of the DNA is being copied with RNA. Is that right? Now, and this is slightly dehydrated form. Dehydrated form. And in this form, twists are slightly different and per 360 degree, there are 11 bases pair, nucleotide pairs. Do you think now they can remain perpendicular? You just imagine when you have a towel, right, you twist in such a way, you make B form, you make it little tight, it will become A form and some water will go out, it will become dehydrated. In the same way DNA can also be dehydrated, slightly tight twist in the same direction, some dehydration of the DNA occur, don't think, expect water will be dropping out. It's not towel, truly speaking, right? So when DNA become, when B form becomes slightly dehydrated, it becomes tighter and per twist, they are not 10, they are 12. And do you think now they will remain perpendicular truly? No, they will become 15 to 20 degree angle to the central axis. It's too easy to understand for every intelligent person. Now, someone who does not understand. Everyone understands? Right, so what I was talking about, what is the difference in B form and A form? B form is the most abundant, A form is less abundant. B form is usually DNA on DNA, A form may be DNA on DNA or DNA on RNA. RNA. Then, this is right-handed twist and of course this is commonality, this is also right-handed twist. That is 360 turn has 10 pairs, here 360 turn has 11 pair. There the bases are perpendicular to the central axis. Here they are slightly oblique, 15 to 20 degree to the central axis. Is it clear? It's not clear, right. Now you imagine, these are, this is central axis, right? These are perpendicular to that. Am I clear? Now, if you tight it, will they remain the same angle or they will distort their angle? Distort. And will they remain perpendicular or they will not be perpendicular? For your level, it's enough to remember that in this case, it is not perpendicular. It is slightly different level for perpendicular. Slight level is what? Of course, not 45. It may be 15 to 20. Am I clear? And this is slightly dehydrated form. Any question? You understand? Fine. Now we come to another form that is called Z form or Z form. Now you imagine you have double twisted rope and it is right handed, clear? Suddenly at one point it becomes left handed. Let me repeat it again. You have a long, ro long rope of double stranded rope with two strings, right? They are twisted right handed. At one point suddenly twists are reversed and they become left handed. Do you think if in the long rope, which is mostly right handed twist, but there are a few points where suddenly twists are reversed and then again become right handed. Do you think at those points the rope will be straight or it will make zigzag? Are you sure? Again I will repeat. But if we are turning it around from right to left, won't it open up? Yes, it will open up there. And then it will twist to the left side. That opening will produce a kink in the DNA molecule. Look here. It is right handed twist going on, right? Then suddenly it becomes, it is right handed and left handed. For of course there it will open up and then, then it will in a different direction. And then again it will start right handed twist. Now this area of left handed twist will produce a kink in these areas. Do you think it will be straight molecule or it will produce some bend? Bend, it will make zigzag. That is why we call it Z form. So, within the right-handed long stretch of DNA, suddenly some areas appear which are left-handed twist. And when there are left-handed twist, that produce zigzag area and this, these are called that area of DNA which has gone into reverse twisting, that is called Z form of DNA. Now, and Z form is very tight, 
Z form is very tight. So let's talk a few words about Z form. Of course, point number one should be it is right handed or left handed? Left handed twist. Right? Number one. Number two, it is really tight. There are 12 bases, bases, nucleotide bases per tight over side. Yes, please. Now, we were talking about Z form. These are left handed twist. There are 12 bases per 360 degree. Any yani one turn has 12 bases, right? And wherever this configuration is present, DNA strand undergoes zigzag arrangement. Presently, we believe that these areas are special signals for the transcription. Right? Maybe they are related with uh, zigzag areas tell certain enzymes when to transcribe a particular piece of DNA or convert a particular piece of DNA into open form and make RNA from there. Is it okay? And that's, that's all for today.